Hello everybody, and welcome to Insider's Guide. Today, we're continuing our discussion of North Star. With North Star, there's a lot to talk about, so this Insider's Guide is split into two parts. In this part, we'll cover the backside and Lookout Mountain. If you haven't already, go check out part A to get some great background on North Star and to learn all about the front side. And hear me rant about the trail map. That's in part A too. Anyways, with that, let's continue in Insider's Guide to Ski Resorts, North Star. We'll now shift over to the resort's backside, which is infamous for its mile-long advanced cruisers and mogul runs. I would probably say that the backside is my favorite place to ski at North Star, although it's a toss-up between it and Lookout Mountain, which we'll also discuss in this part. The backside is home to two lifts, Promised Land Express and Backside Express. Backside Express can definitely get pretty crowded, but Promised Land is nearly always a walk-on. Although every backside trail is reachable from Backside Express, I'd recommend lapping all terrain from Drifter to Promised Land via Promised Land Express, and the remaining terrain via Backside Express. Note that all the backside blues are significantly harder than any of the blues on the front side, and are more intended for advanced intermediates. The exception is Backdoor, which is a flat road running from the front side to the backside. Let's start off with the terrain you should lap via Promised Land Express. Drifter is a great introduction to the backside terrain for intermediates. This is the only backside trail accessible from Zephyr. If you're looking to prioritize skiing the backside, then Zephyr to Drifter is the fastest way to get there. Drifter gets extremely icy and congested due to its popularity, so I don't recommend skiing it in the later hours of the day. The Islands is an always ungroomed intermediate run that I don't love due to its often marginal snow quality. There is an unmarked run called Drifter Connector that runs right here, so you can bail out to Drifter if you try the Islands and don't want to ski the rest. Castle Peak is a solid cruiser in the Promised Land pod that's left ungroomed in the early season and is groomed later on. I'd avoid it when it's ungroomed, but definitely recommend it when it's groomed. Promised Land is an overlooked bump run that honestly isn't that special for me to recommend. It's a pretty short run with it quickly filtering onto back door and eventually Iron Horse. The unnamed lift line under Promised Land Express is actually a lot more fun and the trees just lookers left of the lift below back door hold some great stashes. Now we'll move on to all the terrain that requires you to ride Backside Express. Iron Horse is a great first black to try, as it has the pitch of an advanced blue. That being said, it's a whole lot of fun for everyone, especially when it's groomed. Skiers right at the bottom of Iron Horse is a short but fun alternative called Why Not. Why Not starts off pretty steep, but becomes pretty flat once it reaches the Promised Land lift line. The Iron Horse to Why Not combo used to be one of my favorites as a kid. Polaris, in my opinion, is the most underrated run on the backside. It's always bumped up, but the snow here is typically better than on neighboring runs due to its hidden location. West Ridge requires a bit of a hike to access from backside, so to access Polaris and Iron Horse, I'd recommend using this little black cut below it on the trail map here. It's a little easy to miss, but obvious once you see it. The Rapids is the most famous mogul run at North Star, and is right under the backside lift. I don't love this run because of its typically awful conditions, but it's a classic that's worth checking out if you like bumps. Burnout is arguably the best groomer at North Star. It's a relentless, mile-long cruiser that makes your legs burn from its sheer length and vert. Due to its popularity, Burnout can definitely develop some pretty sketchy conditions, especially past 11am, so I'd recommend doing it as soon as possible while the cord is still fresh. Monument Glade is another favorite of mine and is adjacent to Burnout. Conditions at the top can be drastically different from conditions at the bottom. Luckily, you can always just ski the top half and bail onto Burnout when things get hairy. Right near this big junction, there's a large cliff area. Like the cliffs under Zephyr, this takes a good amount of snow to be sendable but offers some really cool drops into the trees. For the remainder of the runs from Rail Splitter to Challenger, you'll have to take a flat but short-lived catwalk along the top. Sierra Grande and Rail Splitter usually alternate grooming during the course season and are two of the steepest cruisers on the backside, even more so than Burnout, but beware that they get icy pretty quickly, so I'd recommend hitting them in the morning. Challenger is another good intro black, since it only has two steep pitches, one in the middle of the run and one at the end where it turns this corner. Follow Me is the steepest run on the backside and is always ungroomed. Because of its typically bad snow quality, I avoid it. This traverse below Monument Glade is very flat, so be sure to pick up some speed. This is especially crucial if you're coming from Challenger, so try to straight line its final pitch if you can. All the backside runs from Burnout to Challenger filter to this same fork. Lower burnout is always groomed, and down under is mostly ungroomed. This is crucial because both runs lead down to the backside lift and filter into their own unique lines. When down under is ungroomed, its line will always be shorter than the lower burnout line, so you should absolutely take it. If down under is groomed, then it's a toss-up, but I'd still recommend the down under line. 
Before moving on to Lookout Mountain, I want to talk about Sawtooth Ridge. The Sawtooth Ridge is a large gated area on the backside of North Star that offers some solid side country-esque terrain that's still in bounds. The entrance is located on the lower half of Challenger, just before this corner. From there, you hike up a groomed road and have the option of skiing off three distinct peaks. From the entrance, it takes about 10 minutes to reach the first peak, 15 minutes to reach the second one, and 30 to 40 minutes to reach the third one based on your fitness. I'm not going to go too much in depth in this insider's guide since there's a lot to this zone and I want to leave it to you to explore. I will say that the terrain off the first peak isn't that great. The second peak is home to my favorite runs in the Sawtooth as the terrain here is the most interesting. There is a sizable cliff towards the bottom of this peak. The trees at the bottom can get extremely tight as well. There's a saddle between the second and third peak that is home to a small cornice. The climb up to the third peak is the steepest part of the hike and I don't really find it to be worth it with the lackluster terrain you'll encounter. All the sawtooth runs filter into a drainage that eventually spits you out somewhere on down under. Of course, none of this is depicted well on the trail map, but that's part of the fun of exploring the area. The major downside with the Sawtooth Ridge is that it is very infrequently open due to the amount of snow needed to fill it up. It's most frequently open in February and March, but even during those months, openings are extremely inconsistent. I don't think I'd call it true double black diamond terrain due to its mild pitch and short length, but in terms of its technicality, the Sawtooth is the closest thing to expert terrain that you'll find at North Star. If it's open during your visit and you're willing to hike, it's definitely worth your time, even just to get away from the crowd. Now let's move on to Lookout Mountain, which is the best zone at the resort for advanced skiers and for those looking to get away from the crowds. Because of its slightly hidden nature, Lookout Mountain rarely seems to get any lines that exceed a few minutes. Lookout is also home to the steepest mogul and tree runs at the resort. There's only one severe downside with Lookout, its snow quality. Due to its elevation and sun exposure, conditions here are just infinitely more thin and icy than at the rest of the resort. Oftentimes, it can take until February for all the shrubs to be fully covered here. First, let's talk about getting to Lookout. As mentioned earlier, the primary way of getting to Lookout is the Tahoe Zephyr, although you can get here from Comstock, Backside, and Promised Land Express via West Ridge to Lookout Road. From here, ski down Upper Pioneer until you see the Lookout Link, which is a platter. This surface lift takes you up to the middle of the Schwarzstrasse run, which we'll discuss in a second. From here, you can follow the ridge to access the Sugar Pine Glade, Martis, Washu, and the Camp Glade. Note that taking the Lookout Link is the only way to access the top sections of the Face and Boondocks. The second way of getting to Lookout is the Lookout Bypass. This is a groomed road that you can find directly under the Lookout Link. The Lookout Bypass spits you out onto the lower half of Washu, and while it's technically the most efficient way to get to Lookout, I cannot recommend it due to how criminally long and flat it is. Unless the Lookout Link is down, avoid the Bypass. Now let's talk about the Lookout Mountain Trails themselves. Lookers left of Washu is the Camp Glade. Even though it's rarely skied, I'm not too crazy about these glades since the terrain is rather ordinary and the snow isn't typically very good due to its low elevation. Washu is the only intermediate trail in the main face of Lookout and is the steepest blue run at the resort. This is the only run on Lookout that is always groomed and is also the most popular trail here. Because of this, it gets exceptionally icy, especially the drop-in. Yes, I said drop-in. Washu has a very steep initial pitch that basically has no grip when the base is thin. Luckily, past this initial pitch, the run mellows out, but conditions typically continue to be icy. Nonetheless, make sure you're comfortable with a few of the backside blacks before trying Washu. A lot of people underestimate this run, which leads to a ton of yard sales on the first pitch. Martis is very similar to Washu, but it has an even steeper initial pitch. Martis used to be on rotational grooming, but now it seems like the run is ungroomed more often than it's groomed. If it is groomed, it's definitely worth checking out, but be prepared for icy conditions. The Sugar Pine Glade is one of my favorite tree areas at the resort when conditions are good. The upper part is on the steeper side and has some unexpectedly tight corridors. The lower half is not as steep and can get pretty sketchy with coverage. Luckily, it's pretty easy to bail onto the lower half of Stampede. Note that this area is steepest if you enter it close to Boca and is not as steep if you enter it closer to Mardis. As mentioned earlier, the rest of the lookout runs are accessible only through Mardis Camp Express. Schwarzstrasse is essentially a groomed road that allows you to lap the terrain we just discussed from the Martis Camp Lift. It's a bit flat in a few places, but overall moves along just fine. Weber, formerly Upper Martis, is a mogul run with a very steep drop-in. The drop-in can be incredibly sketchy in the early season when the coverage is bare. Past this, though, the run mellows out fairly quickly. Note that there are a few gates into the trees between Weber and Schwarzstrasse. These runs are mellow in pitch, but have a few boulders around the entrances that can be fun to air off. Boca is the run smack dab in the middle of Lookout Mountain. 
Despite this, it never seems to get much traffic. This run is awesome on powder days, but is otherwise not really worth doing. Gooseneck is one of the toughest lookout mountain trails and goes directly under the lift. It has a steep first pitch, natural obstacles, a weird double fall line section in the middle, and a steep final pitch. This is another one that's great on powder days. Stampede and Prosser require a short flat catwalk to access. Stampede, in my opinion, is the steepest and overall most challenging marked trail at North Star. If North Star were to use a double black rating, this trail would probably deserve it as it's a cut above all other single blacks on the mountain. It's always left ungroomed and is quite steep. Stampede, Gooseneck, and Boca all filter onto the lower half of Stampede, which typically has awful coverage. Prosser, like Mardist, used to be on rotational grooming, but is now more of a specialty groom. When it is groomed, it's one of the best cruisers on the mountain. Although, like most other runs here, it gets very icy. Finally, the Lookout Glade is probably my overall favorite glade area on Lookout Mountain due to the fact that it rarely gets traffic. I'm honestly not sure why it's shaded in the same purple on the map that the Sawtooth Ridge is, because it's actually open consistently. Conditions can be dicey, especially towards the bottom, but this is a great place to find some stashes. You can get from Lookout to the backside in one run, by ducking under the platter here, which is allowed, and then taking back door. Before wrapping up this insider's guide, I want to talk about the White Rabbit Zone. White Rabbit goes down the backside of Lookout Mountain, taking you down to Promised Land. At this point, in my two decades of skiing North Star, I've skied every single run, except this one because it opens, quite literally, once in a blue moon. This zone is explicitly not advertised on the trail map, because of how infrequently it's open. You can get here by traversing over towards Prosser and then sidestepping up to the gate. White Rabbit, while not being true bull terrain, is pretty wide open, and has a ton of fun boulders to jump off. It faces south, and requires a lot of snow to open, so it's only open, at most, a few times a season. If it's actually open during your visit, you're pretty much guaranteed fantastic conditions, and it's a must-do. Alright, that about wraps it up for North Star. If you haven't already, go check out part A to hear about the front side, or go check out another episode of Insider's Guide, all about other fine resorts around the West. As always, please leave any questions down below. Thank you all so much for watching. All my love, I'm out.